Good evening, beloveds. Yep, <laughs> I'm at the other end. It is 9 o'clock at night instead of 9 o'clock in the morning. Normally, I wouldn't have even left fair. But two reasons. One, it's the last weekend. And tomorrow's going to be a long day because we've, we have packed down. And two, it started to rain about 4.35. It <laughs> just rained. And I was like, nope, I'm done. Um, so once we, we closed on time and we had some stuff that we got done and then I changed clothes and then it was like, you know what, I'm just gonna go. And, um, I offered to drive one of my coworkers to her campsite rather than having her walk across fair in the rain <laughs> and in the mud. Um, so she didn't have to worry about getting her skirts wet. Uh... So it was a nice thing that I could do, and I still had time. To, so I drove all the way around Fair, dropped her at her camp, and drove all the way back around Fair to get out the garden gate, which takes me out the main gate. Um, but it was it was great fun. Um, I saw a couple of characters that I had. Well, one of them I'd seen uh, earlier in the season, but the other one I hadn't. So I caught him and dragged him over to say hi to Tracy and I. So it was great fun. Or Teresa, sorry, Tree. Um, to, to, to say hi. So, you know, it was a good day. It was a good day. We were busy enough, um, but not too busy because there were only three of us. And, um, you know, Laura was like, ah, because she hadn't slept well. And Tree is getting over a cold that she got instead of Thanksgiving. Um, so, you know, I was just like, all right, well, you know, we got it taken care of. We had a good day, though. We had a good day. And we're on track to, to make what she wants us to make uh, for the weekend. <laughs> Although, apparently, if we don't sell a whole lot of stock tomorrow, everybody's going to take stuff home and store it for the year. So, it'll be good. It'll be good. All right. Uh, it is November 27th. If I can turn the page. It is November 27th, and our title is, I Will Fear No Evil. Our quote is, Are not the friends of God those on whom no fear shall come, nor shall they be put to grief? And that is from the Quran. All right. Today my heart is without fear, for I have implicit confidence in the good, the enduring, and the true. Fear is the only thing of which to be afraid. It is not the host encamped against us, not the confusion around us, that we need to fear. It is the lack of confidence in the good alone which should concern us. Through inner spiritual vision, we know that evil is transitory, but good is permanent. We know that right finally dissolves everything opposed to it. The power of spirit is supreme over every antagonist. Therefore, we should cherish no fear and when we neither fear nor hate, we come to understand the unity of life. I put my whole trust in God. I know that the Spirit will gently lead me and wisely counsel me. I know that the love which envelops everything flows through me to everyone. And with it, there goes a confidence, a sense of joy and freedom. A buoyant enthusiasm for living. A zest for life. For all thy ways are ways of pleasantness, and all thy paths are peace. I realize that fear is not godlike, since it contradicts the divine presence, repudiates limitless love, de denies infinite good. Therefore, I know that fear is a lie, a fraud. It is neither person, place, nor thing. It is merely an imposter that I have believed in. I have entertained it so long that it seems as if it really were something, and it attempts to make me believe that two and two are seven, that the earth is flat, and that God is limited. Today I repudiate all fear. I renounce the belief in evil. I enter into conscious union with the Spirit. I accept the good as supreme, positive, and absolute. With joy, I enter into the activities of the day without regret. I remember the events of yesterday, and with confidence, I look forward to tomorrow. For today, my heart is without fear. 
All right. <laughs> he likes to tackle the tough ones. But I am tired. Sorry about the yawn. <laughs> I got up at 5.30. Well, no, I think... No, I got up at 5.30 this morning. I did get up at 5.30. All right. Um... But this one goes, again, it's an excellent, it's an excellent treatment. It's an excellent meditation. It is an excellent one to read through when you are feeling, you know, fear. Uh, to realize that fear isn't real. Um, what is, it's one of the Roosevelt says, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Um, because fear makes us make foolish choices. Um, and so if we can not fear, then we can make better choices. We can do things that show us that it's not real. It's transitory. It can be managed. Whatever the situation is that's causing us fear, it can be managed. Um, and most of the time, the biggest thing is, is we have to remember we have cho we're a choice. Sometimes the only choice we have is how we feel about a situation, but it, we still have a choice. And so that's where we want to, that's where we want to start with, with choice to recognize and realize that, Hey, you know, the world, the world's a pretty amazing place and move on with it. Uh, so, uh, There was a line in here. I know. I'm sorry. Uh, there was a line in there about um, limiting God. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Okay. I have entertained it for so long that it seems as if it were really something. And it attempts to make me believe that two and two are seven, that the earth is flat, and that God is limited. We can't limit God. But what we can do is limit our perception of God, we can limit our perception of good, and we can limit our perception of ourselves. Um, we have no idea how powerful we actually are. And that is actually the most terrifying thing about us, is because we are so much more powerful than we think we are. But we're afraid to spread our wings and find out. So... And that's really what fear does. Fear, fear attempts to limit God, but nothing can limit God. All we can do is limit our perception. All right. So I will not fear. Uh, and then that quote from the Quran is, Are not the friends of God those on whom no fear shall come, nor shall they be put to grief? We're all friends of God because we're all children of God. We're all beloved children of God. And when we realize that and realize that evil is not a power in and of itself and is actually simply a transitory event, um, a temporary condition, then we can get through just about anything. All right. So today my heart is without fear for I have implicit confidence in good, the enduring and true. So, you know, that's where we want to focus. We want to focus on the good, the enduring and the true. Fear is the only thing of which to be afraid. Like the Roosevelt said. Um, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Because fear is... Fear creates a situation where we... Like I said, we tend to make foolish choices. Um, it is not the host encamped against us, nor the confusion around us that we need to fear. It is the lack of confidence in good, the good alone which should concern us. Because... If we know the good, then we can handle the host const then we can handle the host camped encamped against us. And we can handle the confusion. Because when we look for the good, then the confusion will naturally start to sort itself out. Um the through inner spiritual vision, we know that evil is transitory, but good is permanent. We know, yeah, because evil is not a power in and of itself. It is a misuse. A misuse. 
We know that right finally dissolves everything opposed to it. The power of spirit is supreme over every antagonist. Therefore, we should cherish no fear. And when we neither fear nor hate, we come to understand the unity of life. When we neither fear nor hate. Uh, there's a Star Wars quote. Anger leads, anger leads, anger leads to fear. Fear leads to hate. Hate leads to sorrow. And I probably have those completely out of order, but I'm tired. Uh, and 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 it's true, it's true. So it's like we want to manage our anger, um, because hate does lead to fear, and fear leads definitely leads to sorrow. So hate leads to sorrow too. Um, I put my whole trust in God. I know that the Spirit will gently lead me and wisely counsel me because I trust God. So I'm listening to the still small voice. I'm listening to my heart. I'm listening to my head and I'm going, oh, right, got it. I know that the love that envelop envelops everything flows through me to everyone. I am a channel for that love. And where it goes, a confidence, a sense of joy and freedom, a buoyant enthusiasm for living, a zest for life. Where it goes. So that love brings forth all of those other qualities of God that I just listed. And then this is a quote. For thy ways are the ways of pleasantness and all thy paths are peace. And that is being in alignment with God. It is peaceful. I realize that fear is not godlike. Sugar. Um, sorry, my cat is sneezing. Uh, since it contradicts the divine presence, repudiates limitless love, and denies the infinite good. Okay, which is the very opposite of infinite good, limitless love, divine presence. Those are all godlike. So anything that's not godlike, yeah, is not. Um. Therefore, I know that fear is a lie and a fraud. It is neither a person, place, nor thing. It, evil isn't a person, place, or thing. It is not a power in and of itself. Therefore, I know that... Oh, wait. Sorry. I have... It is merely an imposter that I have believed in. I have entertained it so long that it seems as if it really were something and it attempts to make me believe that two and two are one, uh, seven, that the earth is flat and that God is limited. I love the fact that he puts in there that the earth is flat. I wonder when this one was written. Okay. I just like that line. God, it makes us, fear makes us believe that God is limited. Fear makes us believe that God is it absolutely everywhere. Fear makes us believe that God, there are places that God is not. Not true. Not true at all. Um, so today, I repudiate all fear. I renounce the belief in evil. I renounce the belief that evil is a power in and of itself. I enter into conscious union with the spirit. Always a good first step. And the point of spiritual practice. I accept the good as supreme, positive, and absolute. With joy, I enter into the activities of the day. Okay. Which is, I mean, what better way to start your day off than to open your eyes and be grateful and be joyous to be alive. Um, without regret, I remember the events of yesterday. Without regret, I remember the events of yesterday. I have learned my lessons from yesterday. And then I have, I, so I've kept the information and let the emotion go. And with confidence, I look forward to tomorrow because I've learned the lessons from yesterday. For today, my heart is without fear. All right. The mission today should we choose to accept it. The mission today should we choose to accept it really honestly. And it's going to... All right. The mission today that should we choose to accept it is to neither fear nor hate because that 
is how we un understand, come to the understanding of the unity of life. And that's kind of a weird mission. It, but if we are channels of divine love, then we can't fear and we can't hate. It's not possible to love and fear. It is not possible to love and hate at the same time. Now, yes, you can be afraid for your loved one, but that's different. And it also denies, it again, limits God. And it limits your loved one. So don't fear for them. Trust them. Trust them to know. And trust God. And trust the Spirit. Uh, Alright, so that's the mission. That is the mission. And I am tired. <laughs> so, as I do always, I encourage you to do something loving for yourself. Do something kind for yourself. Do something compassionate for yourself. Whatever that looks like. Tomorrow is going to be a very long day. Uh, it is the last day of the Texas Renaissance Festival. Uh, so I need to repack my bag because I'm, I'm, I'm going with a different outfit. I'm going with a lot less complicated outfit tomorrow. Um, and I may not even put it on. I may just get there and help start with the, the pack down. So I'm going to go get a good night's sleep. Uh, whatever it is for you that is loving, kind, and compassionate, I encourage you to do that. And I encourage you to do that every day. And I encourage you to do it every day because you deserve it. You are a beloved child of God in whom God is well pleased. You deserve your love. You deserve your kindness. You deserve your compassion. Always. I would like it to be practice makes permanent. I would like it to become your first response, your default setting. That no matter what happens in your life, the first thing you respond with is love, kindness, and compassion, especially for yourself. Because if you can do it for yourself, you can do it for anybody. And we all meet people who need that. So we create a bank of our own so that we can share. All right? That's why I encourage it every day. It absolutely is a spiritual practice to practice love, to practice kindness, and to practice compassion on yourself. All right. I also encourage you to engage your mind and your body, to drink plenty of water, to get that face full of sun first thing in the morning, to take care of yourself, and to open the windows of your soul. Allow that breath of heaven to remind you you do live in heaven right here, right now. You are surrounded by God. You are surrounded by spirit. You are surrounded by love. And you are surrounded by good, loving people all the time, all the time. So take that breath of heaven and know when you look for the good, you'll find it. And when you find it, you praise it and it multiplies. I mean, Emma, every now and again, she was easy. <laughs> and that was one of the easy ones. I love Emma. Emma Curtis Hopkins. I, I commend her to you if you do not know who she is. So, um, but if you've been around CLC for a while, you know who she is because Jesse loves her. All right. We're going to have an amazing service for you tomorrow, but I will be on at 9 a.m. with you tomorrow. Um, and then we'll have a great service for you. So take care of yourself and I will see you in the morning. Rest well, beloveds. All right. Rest well and know that you're loved.